Hello and welcome to another Now Faith program, a program that I believe will inspire and challenge your faith. A few weeks ago, we interviewed Pastor Fred Roberts, the founder of the Durban Christian Centre on the subject of healing. And today, we have the second part of that interview, which I know will challenge and encourage your faith to believe God for your personal miracle. Let's join Pastor Fred right now. Now, Pastor Fred, if somebody is sick, how do they begin to pray for themselves and what should their prayer life be like from there on after? Do I every day have to ask God to heal me? Um, and, and then also, what is the origin of sickness? Jesus said that you mustn't be like the heathen mm. when you pray saying the same things over and over and over and over, thinking that God's going to hear you if you repeat the prayer over and over and uh, you'll receive an answer to your, to your prayer. But when you pray, you must believe that God is and that He is a reward of those who diligently seek Him. If you ask more than once, it means that you don't really believe. You ask in faith and believe that you've received. And if you received it, then it's yours. And from that moment, you thank God for it until it materializes because it will, as you thank God for your healing. So every day deliverance. after that, you, every day you after thank that, the Lord you just thank the and Lord praise for Him. It. You might praise not feel it. the physical manifestation, but by faith, you thank Him for it. And praise is the language of faith too. Yes. You just thank Him for it that it's done. Yes. And see yourself well. Right. Thank God Absolutely. for it. Pastor Fred, um, the other point is, the uh, origin of sickness. And I want in, in particular here to ask you about an incident that happened many years ago about a missionary's wife who was um, demonized and, and, and the thing that you had in your ear, the cancer. Tell us, first of all, the origin of sickness. Well, you'll notice in, in the Word of God that Jesus healed the sick and He cast devils out. Demons are real. Right. They're not the figment of your imagination. They're very real. And demons are the cause of a lot of sickness. And the origin of sickness is a way back in the beginning. You know that man was perfect when he was created by God. And sin and sickness came as a result of the curse. curse. And of course, the devil was the one who initiated it all. And we know that a lot of sicknesses are of the, of, of the devil. The devil causes so the, the three things, Pastor Fred, that when Adam fell in that garden, transgression, the three things were number one, separation from God, number two, sickness, number three, poverty. Right. Those three things go together as part of the curse. But Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law. So He redeemed you from sickness, from poverty, and from uh, sin. Galatians 3 and Galatians 13 3. says Christ has redeemed He's us. He's redeemed okay. us from it. So you don't have to carry that sickness. Right. And you thank God for it after you've prayed and believed God. You've received it. Now you thank God for it. Now if you keep on praying that same prayer that you prayed, you're really praying in unbelief. Right. If you are, you are saying, God, you didn't hear me the first time. Now you hear me the second time or the right. third time or the fourth time. So in other words, you're trying to, trying to receive from God by being a beggar. Yes. Now, Pastor Fred, many years ago, you were diagnosed with a cancer, a tumor in your ear. Tell us that story which led to you praying for a lady. Well, that, that uh, is quite a story, actually. Um, I had this thing in my ear, which was a melanoma, and it continued to grow and became very acute. Mm. In fact, the whole side of my head became painful and, and uh, I, I knew there was something wrong with, with them. Now my brother-in-law was a medical man from Canada and he looked at my ear and he said, Fred, that's serious. You better go and see to it as soon as you can. It's very serious. I don't want to frighten you, but it's serious. So I had an occasion to be in a doctor's office and uh, Nelly phoned him and said, please look at Fred's ear. So he did and he gave me a letter to a specialist to uh, he said, you've got to get that thing removed. It's serious, serious. So, uh, never forget, I got home and I told 
uh, nearly about, about it, about it, what, what this thing was. Uh, the, the doctors said I must have it operated on. Yeah. And so we started to pray and believe God to be, to, to heal. Now you either go to the doctor and get a cut out or you believe trust God, God for it. Stand on his word. So you can do that. So I, when I uh, started to pray, a scripture came to me just like that. So I looked it up and uh, set your house in order for you shall surely die and not live. So that's immediate the devil creating fear in you to, to make you disbelieve. Mm. So I said, devil, you're a liar. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I, I'm, I'm trusting God for my healing and God will heal me. So I had an occasion to go down to East London to pray for a missionary's wife. This missionary phoned me and he said, please come and ask me, please come pray for my wife. She's in a pathetic state. So I flew down to East London from Durban and uh, I'd been fasting for some time seeking God with regard to my own life. Yes. And when I got to the house, I'll never forget it. I walked in um, and she, this uh, missionary lady was lying uh, to my right and she, in no way she could see into the side of my head. Impossible. She couldn't see on the left side. Impossible. Couldn't see what was no. happening there. Like uh, she'd yeah. be lying here. Right. And you, yeah. And um, uh, we started to pray and she was totally demented. All kinds of garbage flowing from her mouth and uh, just terrible. Demonized. And uh, her husband was sitting, was next to the bed with his elbow on the bed, elbows on the bed, praying for her earnestly. And I came and sat on the air, at the bottom of the bed and she was over there. Couldn't and there was no it. way she could see the side of my head, impossible. And as we were praying, suddenly from her mouth, she says, you got a devil in your ear. Man, I got mad. I got fuming mad. Here's the devil telling me what he's doing. Yeah, me. yeah. So, uh, He's acknowledging I, some of sorry, him in you. Yeah, in the, in acknowledging the, yeah. me, yeah. this thing. So I excused myself and I went into the bathroom and uh, I said, devil, I've had enough of you. And I bounded in Jesus' name. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, go. I rebuked it. And I got a hold of this thing. With your fingers? Uh, with my fingers and I pulled it out. It, f it fell into my hand, blood, uh, everywhere and then I uh, just washed and came back and now I'm, now I'm really, really upset to this devil. And uh, to, with her husband, took authority over her, that demon that was harassing her and tormenting her. She was totally delivered. Wow. Totally delivered. My brother-in-law, when he saw my ear after that, he said, hey, that surgeon saw, sure did a good job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and little did he know that it was Dr. Jesus. Right. Yeah. Right. Pastor Fred also, Another thing that I'd like to ask you with regards to healing, because I know that, you know, God, we are spirit, soul, and body. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23 tells us. Right. We're a tripartite being. And as much as God wants to heal our physical bodies, yet the greatest part of us that He desires to heal is our soul. And, um, and yes, we do believe God wants to heal us, but I do believe that He wants to make us whole as well. And so tell us a little bit about the role that um, salvation plays with healing in the body. Well, you see, Pastor John, you know, you, you, you cited the scripture in Thessalonians, uh, being a tripod by being. Yes. Now your spirit enables you to contact the spirit world. Yes. Your body enables you with five senses to contact the physical world. Yes. You can see it, you can feel it, you can hear it and so on. The same with your spirit. And when you uh, are not a believer, your spirit is dead to God. Yeah. You, you don't appreciate Him, you don't appreciate the Bible, you don't appreciate anything about God. Um, you, you know, you've got to, you can be religious, but you're not really in fellowship with Him mm. because you're prone to look out through this window we call a body and yes. touch this physical world, see this physical world, hear this physical world. We're living in this physical right. world all the time. Right. So when you, when you give your heart to the Lord, you're born again. 
when you're born again, your spirit is made alive to God. Right. The Bible says that you are dead in trespasses and sins if you're an unbeliever. When, when uh, God said to, to Adam, in the day that you eat of the fruit, you shall surely die. In dying, you will die. It's two deaths. Mm. So he died spiritually and then he would die physically later. So death is a separation. Death is a, a spiritual death is the separation from God. from God. And physical death is a separation from this physical world. Yes. So when you cannot see this world anymore and you cannot hear it and, and so on, you, or, uh, you, you, you die physically. Yes, right. So you're dead spiritually. You don't, you, God, yes. the Bible, everything with yes. regard to the Spirit doesn't mean anything to you. Yes. So the Bible says that you need to be quickened and made alive to God. Right. You hath he quickened, Ephesians 2 says, who were dead in trespasses and in sins. Right. You hath he quickened. Right. So what has really been quickened? Your spirit. Your spirit, man. So your spirit becomes alive to God. Yes. When Jesus comes into your heart and you believe in him with all your heart, you are born of the Spirit of God. And suddenly this spirit becomes alive and now you, you want to want to read your Bible, you want to pray, you, yes. because your spirit has become alive. So you're living a balanced life. Yes. Physically and spiritually. Yeah. Otherwise, you're living just like, uh, like an animal. Animal yes. There's no appreciation for God or right. the spirit world. So it's important that that spirit be made alive to God. Yes, absolutely. By the new birth. And that, of course, is the greatest of all miracles, somebody that's born again by the Spirit of God. There's no miracle greater than that. Yeah. To be born again in the Spirit of God. Yeah. Become a child of God. Absolutely. No miracle greater. Absolutely. Pastor Fred, um, you've, you've seen many miracles. You yourself have witnessed miracles in your own life. But I do recall one specific miracle uh, in the history of the church, in the history of your life, uh, which I think was in the early, or the late 70s, early uh, 80s, of a little boy that the Lord healed of polio. Tell us a little bit about that time and what happened. Well, normally I would just pray for the sick in mass at the end of the meeting. And uh, this little boy started to scream. And um, he, uh, uh, he had Was this while on. you were praying? Uh, as I was praying. As you were praying. He, uh, he, he had a leg iron on because of the, the polio. polio condition. And uh, I had a medical doctor with me at the time and he shouted out to the man who was the father. He says, take that thing off, it's hurting him. Take it off. He took the leg iron off and the little boy was healed. The next, the next week he came wearing his first pair of shoes. Wow. Uh, How old was he, Pastor Fred? Oh, I, at that time, I think he was about eight or nine, somewhere yeah. there. Fantastic. So wonderful. That was a phenomenal miracle, which I think was documented in the newspapers yeah, it was. the following day. And there was a whole write-up about that. Yeah, you see, signs, wonders and miracles. I'm just reminded of the scripture uh, in Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18, where Isaiah says, Here am I now, and the children whom you have given me, we are for signs and wonders. That's right. That's an incredible statement. People of God are for signs and wonders. We can't have this mediocre type of Christianity. No. And like I was saying earlier on, that inherent in every person, in every human being is a desire for the supernatural. Because we're made in the image of God. God is a supernatural miracle working God. And so when He designed us, He created in us, genetically encoded in us, is the desire and hunger for supernatural. And Pastor Fred, if we don't find the supernatural in the church, then we will venture outside of the church. And that's why, for example, today, there's such a rise in the occult and psychics and so on and so forth. What's your take on that? Well, it's unnecessary for people to go and look for that kind of stuff outside of the church. You know, the, the worshiping God and serving God, it should be uh, miraculous. Right. And we should- A church look. service should be miraculous. Yeah, we should come to church and expect the presence of God to be in that service and the manifest presence of God. Yes. To be... Because I must say, um, when I got saved in your church back in 82, and then I used to play the drums, uh, one of the things, I couldn't wait to get to church on a Sunday. 
and sit on that front chair because uh, it was like you didn't know what was going to happen next. Anything, um, anything could happen. And that was an incredible um, sort of atmosphere that came in there um, that really, I think, you instilled in the hearts of the people that all things are possible to them that believe. So um, what, what can you add to that possibly? Well, coming to service or church service, you, it should be that way. should be that because, way. Because um, the Holy Spirit can do whatever He desires to do. And we should be open to Him to do it. Why do you think there's such a shutdown uh, in a lot of the churches to the moving of the Holy Spirit? A lot of it is because of ignorance. They don't uh, understand the Holy Spirit. They do not a favor with the Holy Spirit and how He works. Um, and they, they don't really uh, expect it to happen. Whatever the Lord wants to do, let Him do it. Just be totally open to the move of the Spirit of God. And a lot of it is also because of the unfamiliar, that if they can't understand something with their minds, they'll rather tend to shun it. And I always say, you know, we actually serve, and He's an infinite God. God is infinite. And we want to try and understand an infinite God with finite minds. Because in Jesus' day, there were some strange things that they saw, even in the early church. Well, and that's what they said. Yeah, we when see they went, some, we've, we've seen strange things. Strange today. things, and I'm just reminded as well, Pastor Fred, in the um, the garments of the high priest in particular, the high priest, and he had an outer coat or the outer tunic, and then over that he had the robe that came to the knees, just above the knees, and at the bottom of that robe were the uh, uh, golden bells and the pomegranates, and I, the scriptures will tell you that that robe, not every priest wore, it distinguished the high priest from the other priests. And in other words, it, it, there was something different about the high priest and his garments. And I think that this is what should make us as a church different. The fact that we move in the tinkling of the bells, the moving of the Holy Ghost. We should be a different church. Why? Because Jesus is alive. Absolutely. He's our great high priest. When the high priest went into the Holy of Holies, the, all of Israel would be waiting. Yes. And, uh, you know, did he die? Yes. And there was he alive. Right. As long as he was moving, there as was sound. As long as they could hear the sound of the tinkling of the bells. And uh, when he came out, they knew he was alive. So Jesus ascended, sat down at the right hand of the Father. Yeah. And how do we know he lives? Because on the day of Pentecost, there was the tinkling of the little bells. Right, absolutely. Speaking in other tongues. And the baptized in the Holy Ghost. So when people are baptized in the Holy Ghost, I know I have a high priest mm. who's alive forevermore. Yes, yes, absolutely. Pastor Fred, one of the scriptures that I'm just thinking of right now is Romans 8 and 11 that says, you know, if the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in us, then that Holy Spirit in us will quicken our mortal bodies. There's tremendous power in resurrection life. Jesus said in John 11 and 25, I am the resurrection and the life. And uh, so tell us a bit about resurrection life. Well, how was Jesus raised from the dead? He was raised by the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. So if the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He shall quicken your mortal body. So the Holy Spirit comes and takes up His residence within us. Yes. He's not out there. Yes. He comes to live in us. Yes. When you invite Jesus to come into your life, the Holy Spirit comes to live in you. Yes. So the same life that quickened Jesus from the dead is in you. Is in us. So it quickens your mortal, so mortal body. So all the healing is in us Everything, by the power of the Holy well, Spirit. That's right. So if you, if you sense that you, uh, sickness is coming upon you, just rebuke it. Just rebuke it. Say, Lord, I thank you for the same risen life that raised you from the dead is in me. And that life quickens me right now. And I'm made whole in Jesus' name. Now, wasn't that exciting and encouraging to know that God still heals and delivers today? The Bible says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. 
I want to tell you, friend, he's still in the healing business. He heals and saves every hour of the day all over the world. No matter what your problem may be, he still does it today. What an awesome God we serve. And now for something very special. We've managed to dig up in our archives a short clip of Pastor Fred in his young days where he was preaching and praying for the sick. I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but Christ liveth in me. Life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for me. So you were crucified with Jesus. He took the whole world upon himself. He's crucified. And then he rose from the dead. And when he rose from the dead, I rose with him. And when he sat down at the right hand of God the Father, I sat down with him. And so did you. Now I want you to understand that identification tonight. That on the cross, you as a sinner were taken. So that you can become righteous and be, have the righteousness of God. And sickness was taken and nailed to that cross. And the devil and all his minions were defeated. Totally, completely defeated. And Jesus ascended victoriously, sitting down at the right hand of God the Father as the great conqueror, the great victor. Hallelujah. And as long as you speak your sickness, you speak your, your failures and your shortcomings, you're giving glory and praise to the devil. You're giving him praise. Stop doing it. Let's change our whole attitude. Let's change our confession. And let's just say what God says. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Through his wounds at Calvary, I am healed. I am healed. You say, preacher, I've heard that so many times and still I am sick. Because you haven't acted upon what you believe. You're just giving mental assent to it. You're just mouthing it, saying it. But you're not really believing it in your heart. If you believe it in your heart, you truly do what God says you ought to do. Thank God for the provision He's made for you and me. Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Hallelujah. Well, bless the Lord. Come on, let's walk a little more. Come on, lift your feet. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Wow, what an inspiration and how awesome to see the power of God being displayed as Pastor Fred preached the gospel. I'm sure that your faith has been challenged. And if you have a health problem, then I'd like you to place your hand on that area where there is the affliction. And I want to join my faith together with your faith. The Bible says, if any two of us agree on earth concerning anything that we ask, that it shall be done for us by our Father which is in heaven. So I want you to place your hand on that infirmity in your body. And I know that as you watch the program and faith rose up in your heart, that we're going to believe God to heal you today. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I bring your people to you, 
Right now, we come against the spirit of infirmity. We thank you for your healing virtue that quickens those bodies. Right now, whatever the infirmity is, whatever the sickness is, whatever that condition is, whatever that ailment is, I thank you that you died on the cross and that part of the atonement is the work of healing. Healing is the children's bread. And today, I thank you for healing that flows into those bodies in the name of Jesus that what is out of line right now, you sent your word according to Psalm 107 and verse 20. You sent your word and healed us of our infirmities. And so today, Father, we speak health and healing right now that your healing virtue flows into those bodies in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Friend, if God has done something in your life, healed your body, restored your marriage, or whatever it is, would you be so good as to let us know? The email address and phone numbers are appearing on your screen right now. And we would so love to hear of what the Lord has done because we serve an awesome God. And the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So it's important that you share your testimony. It's important that you tell others of what God has done. And we would love to hear from you. If you also have prayer requests and you'd like us to pray for you, you could email us as well those prayer requests and we will pray with you. Well, praise the Lord. It's been good having you join our program. Until next time, God bless you. And remember, now faith is. We start learning before we take our first breath. And our learning deepens as we discover what our hearts beat for and what our hearts break for. These are insights of love. Because to love profoundly and intentionally is the highest form of learning and should be as natural as breathing. But it is when our learning has the breath of the Holy Spirit that we can break through into our true potential. It is in a learning environment saturated with His presence that we can begin to realize and accomplish what we were born for. Durban Christian Center's Bible Institute prioritizes this kind of learning. That's why we call it the School of the Spirit. A school where the ordinary becomes the extraordinary.